Welcome back. We are so privileged today to be able to have one of my favorite Met quilters and a male quilter as well, Jack Edson from Buffalo in New York. Jack, welcome. Hi, John. How are you? Good, thank you. It's so good to have you here. Many people don't know, but I came to um, America in two, uh, 2020, at the beginning of the year, and I actually got to meet you and take some of your classes, and it was one of the most brilliant experiences. Why don't you tell people a little bit about yourself? Well, I'm a retired librarian. I worked in a public library 46 years, and the almost the entire time I was making quilts at the same time. So I retired three years ago and I've had kind of a oh, wonderful free time to create, create, create. And this past year from March till now, I've been pretty much stuck at home. So it's really given me um, much more of an opportunity to create many hours per day. Uh, I always used to say I wish I had more time just to concentrate on quilting, but be, be careful of what you ask for because sometimes you get it, like this <laughs> pandemic year. So uh, it's been a really great year and um, I've pretty much um, gone back and forth between portraits and patterns. Okay, I like both very much. And um, in many of the portrait pieces that have been done in the last six months, there's a very strong quilt pattern um, kind of worked into the portrait. Uh, the idea is which is um, more important, the picture of the person or the quilt pattern. And I don't know, <laughs> they're both pretty important. So um, I thought I would show some of the fabric collages. They're smaller and easier to show, um, whereas the quilts tend to be considerably larger. And I don't know about you with Zoom, but it's very difficult to show something that's um, the size of a full-size quilt. It really is. But you're very lucky as well because you've got that gorgeous porch at the front of your house where you can oh. hang a lot of your quilts as well, which I think is one of the most brilliant things. And I dream of being able to have that in one of my homes. Well, thank you. Um, yeah, uh, one of my ideas is to put art in the world. I think that's the reason why we make these things to kind of enrich the world with our art. And I have a porch. And I have a lot of quilts, so why not, um, you know, hang one out? Uh, put one out every nice day uh, during the warmer uh, seasons. So you might see a good hundred um, throughout the course of a year. And they are extraordinary. And I'm, you'll have noticed mm -hmm. I've put some of them up as we've been talking because your work oh, yeah, is yeah. incredible. Yeah. Yeah, um, and um, it's a very um, quiet little street here, but occasionally there'll be a car out front. You know, somebody made a special trip here to see if there's a quilt out. So it's good for the ego, you know? I think we all need our fan base out there and people do constantly be encouraging us to keep doing what we're doing. It's not to be underestimated. Because also working in isolation, especially now where we are in the world, having that connection with other people as well, that's really, really important. Definitely, definitely. Well, would you like to see some of the Fairbrook Definitely. collages? Definitely. Now, bear in mind, these are collages um, coming from the origins in the Cubist period, Picasso, Brock, pasted paper. Okay, but these are um, pasted fabric. And um, I'll move the quilt block. Because what you do is you start by doing these, but then sometimes you then convert these into full-sized quilts, don't you? Well, um, sometimes, yes, it can work either way. Um, I uh, did a quilt, this is a from a painting by Bernini, uh, the French Baroque, um, basically sculptor, although he did architecture and painting as well. Um, uh, this is a paint from a painting by Bernini of the martyrdom of St. Sebastian. So um, I did this Faber collage in July, 
And I had also done a quilt. I think I did the quilt beforehand. So it's not always a matter of doing, you know, the study and then making the quilt from that. Although sometimes it does work that way. Um, I think that um, for my artwork, I don't want to get it boiled down to a formula. I don't want it to be the same way constantly. But if I'm doing something one way, I try to do it the opposite on a later piece to end up with something different. Um, so this is- and Just um, if you talk people through that, that is all fabric. Yes, yes. Um, this is a piece of uh, foam core. Uh, we used it in the class you came to. And I put a grid on it. Uh, similarly, uh, on the image I'll use, I'll, you know, go to the copy store, blow up uh, an image of a favorite art piece, and then draw a grid on that. Uh, each square on the grid corresponds to the place on foam court. And then I use a um, little paper window and put that over the um, area of the picture that I'm going to be working on. And frequently, I'll make a little drawing of um, the block that um, I'm making. So I kind of um, break it down, you know, light, dark, the basic shape. Um, it's usually very simple, OK? And uh, then I uh, glue that down, usually a couple layers, maybe cover the whole thing with one layer to get uh, kind of the basic color, and then go back one by one, refine it into a clearer shape, what's appearing in that square of the image. Um, one thing I want to mention is that the image is extremely important. It can't be just a picture of any old thing, any old somebody. It's, I look at hundreds and hundreds of images. Um, during regular time period, I try to go to a couple art museums every month or two, always for the art museum experience, but also I'm on a hunting or a fishing expedition to find a face that you know, it's really going to work. Um, this is um, an image of Augustus St. Gaudens, the basically 19th to 20th century American sculptor. And usually I'm looking for an image that's really going to work. Um, it's from a painting of him by Kenyon Cox. It's at the Metropolitan Museum in New York City. Every time I go to that museum, I find myself standing in front of the painting. Uh, this happens a lot. This is telling you something, that this is something you should use in your work. And then I usually read a lot about the biography of the person, um, whether it be a scandalous life like God, St. Gaudens or somebody very virtuous. Um, this is um, a kind of a joy to look at. I mean, there's the one, the only in a fabric collage. This would be too difficult to make into a quilt, a sewn quilt, with all the working from behind and the seam allowance and this kind of thing. So frequently, these fabric collages are seen as finished work in their own right, rather than one step toward the finished quilt piece. Can we then, see a close up of that? Because the I'm work sure. in it, it looks amazing where it is now, but it's just having seen it myself, the work in it, the fabric you've chosen, it's extraordinary. So you're talking. Um, yeah, um, mainly, I think my work is about being a colorist. And um, the computer takes pictures of color, but you're actually looking at something different on your computer screen, it makes it, you know, different. Um, the other thing that's important to realize 
is that my work looks different in person compared to when it's photographed because there's an app on the computer that enhances like the facial aspect of a piece. So um, this, it does it for kind of so-so pictures of people. It makes them look better. So when I take a picture of my own work, it's making it more toward the portrait and departing from the, um, you know, the quilt pattern. Um, this is a um, recent portrait of, <clears throat> pardon me, Lewis Comfort Tiffany, the great designer and stained glass artist. And in the last couple of years, I've gone to four big art shows of the work of Tiffany. I mean, wherever you, you can't, like they say in England, you can't swing a dead cat without hitting a vicar. <laughs> or maybe they only say that on British TV. I don't know, but um, okay, you can't go into a museum without seeing a hundred lamps by Lewis Comfort Tiffany. Well, that's a bit of an exaggeration, but I did see four shows of his work in the past two years, wow. including one he had a wonderful photo portrait. I mean, artists that are from, you know, the turn of the century onward, we've got photographs of them. Whereas earlier artists, no photography, no photos of other people. So we're relying on um, an artwork painting. Um, this one is quite like, I would say blurred. In doing these fabric collage portraits, I have to ask myself, to what point do I want it in focus? And it's not always the same. Sometimes we want something very close focus. And other times, um, think about a more fuzzy focus, which might take something back into the past. And the emphasis might be something like the fabric and something like this. One little insight that I'd like to share is the work is usually about warm and cool. Okay. And usually the choices of cool fabric, this light blue, this kind of mauve color, a little bit of blue around the edge pink with blue speckles in it, that's really enriching the piece greatly and giving it quite a third dimension. We have colors in fabric. Would you agree almost any color we could desire, we could find in a fabric? Without question, definitely. That's amazing. When I look at my earlier work, the fabric choices were not there. If you wanted red, you had red. If you wanted yellow, maybe two different yellows, you know? Whereas now uh, you'll have an entire wall of and flesh colors. Well, if you look at Kona solids on their own, they're 365 solid colors, different colors yeah. in, the Kona, in the Kona solid range. It's obscene, which is wonderful because we've got all that choice. But as you say, 20 years ago, 15 years ago, it was nowhere near as strong. Oh, uh, yes, yes. You had to design pretty much around the um, dearth of colors. You know, there wasn't much. It wasn't like painting no. where you could really mix it on your foot. This is very interesting. Um, this past uh, September, I did go on a trip. I went to the Quilters Hall of Fame in um, Marion, Indiana. It was my work. It was like 35 pieces, um, several little fabric collages and about 20 quilts um, in this giant mansion house. Um, so it was, it was nice. Um, on the way back, I went to Indianapolis to go to the art museum there. And they had a show of um, the work of um, Edward Hopper. And it was just his work showing hotels. 
So it was it was great. They had the lobby set up like a hotel room. It was incredible. So I found an early um, self-portrait of Hopper. And I took a photograph of it and then did two Faber collages. Um, sometimes I'll do two at the same time. The idea being there's a certain amount of effort to do one. But if you do two, you're not doing twice as much effort. You're doing maybe one point, I don't know, a third, one, one and a third as much effort. Why not cut out two pieces? Now, what happens is I usually work on them one for one for a period of time and then start to concentrate on one and kind of let the other one sit there and then go back to the second one. So you'll never really get a duplicate. I mean, you really can't because in printed fabric, you would end up with different areas of the print, presumably. So this is um, Edward Hopper. Um, is a young man. But it is extraordinary how those two, and you did those two together, and they look yeah. so different. Yeah. Yeah, they will. Um, even No matter how hard we try to do something the same. In art history, there's always, somebody's always done this before. Robert Rauschenberg, the famous American pop artist, um, he did... Um, Early in his career, he tried to do two paintings identical. And then the idea would be for the viewer, where is the difference? So anyway, you can't, if it's done by hand. But, that, but that's a really good point, though, because you, it's impossible to do them the same, because even if you're trying to cut a curve, the curve would be different each way you're doing it because it's all cut by hand. And the Every fabric, group. even if you use the same fabric, you're cutting it differently as well. Yeah. Every breath we take um, is different in our lives. We can't do the same. This is an interesting yes. one. This is uh, another American artist, um, Edwin, um, Edwin Dickinson. He was um, maybe the turn of the 20th century. And this is a photograph of him. I've seen many artworks by him, but I finally tracked down his portrait. Um, this would be, even not knowing it was a favorite artist, this portrait would absolutely work for a collage. Um, you know, the penetrating gaze of the eye. This is something I go for where the dark line uh, pretty much defines the character. And it can be uh, a straight on portrait, a profile, as we saw with Augustus St. Gaudens or sometimes the um, that kind of two-third view that we find with the hopper. Um, all these classic poses, you can't beat them. You know, you really can't. And um, this is um, kind of a wonderful color tour de force, I would say, um, in that I took a lot of chances. I think many people in doing fabric portraits and quilts in general, just use these kind of bland color schemes. And in my life, I'm always trying to get people to take chances with new colors, colors that they wouldn't be gravitating toward immediately. You know, never opting for that beige, tan, and brown color count. Never. We need much more of a rich um, color combination. Oh, one of the other things is always label your work, your signature and the date in the subject, because it's so easy to forget when things were done. But it's also a good heritage of it as well, because you've done so many pieces. If you had <laughs> them all on there, you wouldn't, you would be struggling to find them sometimes. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I, in many cases, I really don't know when I did early quilts. I have to kind of guess based on the material, uh, you know, what was available then. And I've been doing this since 1975. This is um, the British 
great artist, the arts and crafts movement, um, William Morris. That is incredible. Thank you. Um, I did it um, May 15th to May 19th, 2020. That's incredible that that's taken you four days. And I had to sleep too. So <laughs> in the year, maybe it was 1996 or so, I was in London and I walked into the V&A Museum and they were celebrating the centenary of the death of Morris. And I could not believe the vast quantity of artwork they rounded up for the Victoria and Albert show. I mean, it was amazing, large and varied materials, furniture, tapestry, the Kelmscott press books, um, you know, you name it, and he did it. So I've always had that in the back of my mind, you know, must do something someday for Morris, I mean, male, crafts, woo, working against all sorts of obstacles. The wife was having an affair with the other pre-Raphaelite artist. I mean, look it up. And um, I think it was Rossetti. And, um, you know, uh, look at the look on his face. So the idea was we all weren't able to get our hair cut during the pandemic um, <laughs> for months and everybody started looking like this. And I thought <laughs> it, was a perfect, <laughs> it was a perfect, um, you know, form following function or what you say and how you say it. Um, so you see what, having done your class, what I have always found so extraordinary and even to this day, having done the class, the fact that you break it down into such tiny, tiny little pieces and you do, and you work on those small pieces, but when you put them all together, you end up with something that exquisite. I just, it's astonishing to me that that is all fabric and from that tiny little viewfinder. And it's uh, the simplest yeah. of tools, but you are such an artist. It's incredible. Mm. Thank you, thank you. Um, I really studied portraits um, for many, many years, and my interest is the human physic, as they say in England, the physiognomy. Nobody over here knows what that word means. <laughs> hey, you know, hey, how, which really shows what's inside us. Um, there's a wonderful poem by Jared Manley Hopkins about. Um, men's faces it's I, I can't remember the entire um uh lines but it's uh jared manley hopkins if you googled jared manley hopkins men's faces uh you get the poem uh it's really quite wonderful and um i do uh constantly look at people's faces in my art collection um there's uh many many portraits and, um, you know, I don't know the people <laughs> in most cases. So this one, oh, and that's it. So- Let me um, see close up on that beard. I'm absolutely astonished by it. I like the hair. Uh, it, it's really um, a great uh, photo. Um, I got it from, I got the catalog of the centenary exhibit and the portrait is it's about that big um, in the book. So, I mean, I bring things up to the photocopy place and blow them up and blow them up. And, um, you know, um, I'm always interested in what happens when it enlarges. In, in hauling this up, um, here's the back of it. Um, oh, wow. This is, um, I'll show you uh, this. I, I've done, um, a couple quilts, portraits with monkey wrench, or um, there's another name for it. Snail um, trail, isn't it? Or snail? Snail trail, right, right. Yeah, um, you keep on dividing the, uh, uh, you know, the triangle. Um, and you need two different ones to get this 
whirl, and then you would have four come off from it. So I did a little painting um, of this so I could make a quilt with a portrait of, um, it's a self-portrait of Caravaggio from a painting of um, Christ being betrayed. It, it's the famous painting in, um, it was in, there's a whole book about it. It was in a uh, Jesuit refectory in Dublin um, under, you know, quite a bit of dirt and grime. And they didn't really realize what it was, but they had it cleaned and, it, you know, it's the Caravaggio painting. The Jesuits still own it, but it's on kind of like permanent loan. It's in the Dublin uh, National Gallery. I was there once, but it hadn't been rediscovered then, so I've never seen it. But anyway, um, so I did a portrait of um, uh, Caravaggio. He's one of the astonished onlookers. He inserted his own face um, many times in many of his paintings. But I had to um, make like a painted sample of the design because it's very easy to mix them up when you're working on it. So um, I don't have that piece out. Um, I'm not sure where it is, but I did one. Speaking of Great Britain, um, if we weren't stuck at home, I would be on a plane right now to go to the National Gallery to see the Artemisia show. Oh. You know, they just got the, um, uh, they they purchased um, the self-portrait of Artemisia is St. Catherine with the palm branch. There's a couple versions, but um, so let me show you what I did um, using this design. I did a large um, fabric collage portrait of um, oh, Artemisia. Incredible. Yeah, it's got a little gnome down here. <laughs> he, he's holding it straight. He's holding it straight. <laughs> but but um, that's the um, Artemisia. And then I'll kind of zoom it in so you can see um, the snail's trail or monkey wrench. Anyway, uh, for purpose that of... shows your artistry because you've taken such an incredible block and turned that into the most incredible piece of work. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, yeah, that one I'm very thrilled with. Um, it's um, four feet tall. I don't know how much is that in meters. <laughs> we still work in feet here. <laughs> yeah, okay, good, good. Um, and then um, the little squares are. I mean, there's my thumb. And there's the square. So they're little. They're very small details. Of course, this is very easy to do compared to sewing it. Um, I like projects that are kind of difficult. I don't like anything that's too easy. You know, it's like, eh, I could do that in my sleep. <laughs> But you know what I um, love is you say that, but you look at that piece and people like me look at it and I think I'm reasonably good at some of it. And I think your <laughs> eye for color, as you say, you are definitely a colorist because even if you do do that, you do get it right with those tiny little blocks, getting them right. You've got that greater image to be able to see all the color through the whole block where a lot right. of people won't have that. Um, yeah, yeah, it's not for everybody. 
And um, but it is definitely for everybody to aspire to. That is, <laughs> I hope. Um, the idea was um, there was the emotional engagement. Um, you know, the year of women in art galleries this last year, um, the big show of Artemisia, um, the purchase of the new painting. I mean, I can tell you how they restored it, how they framed it. You know, there's loads of um, wonderful um, uh, little films. There's something about not being able to see something in person also. You know, uh, I just wish I could see it. So we we imagine things are even greater than they are when we can't see them. It's very true as well. And I think it's because, as you say, everybody's stuck at home. You've done some incredible pieces on there. What keeps you going on these? Um, that's a good question. Um, and I cannot imagine not doing them. Um, I simply can't imagine not. Um, if people are looking for reasons why, the reasons are to exercise one's brain, to use the talents that we're given. I mean, that's a large one. Um, and um, it, it's this um, thing that possibly I'm the only person that can do these like this. I mean, other I'm things. The maybe only person I've ever seen do them and do them that well. Oh, thank you. Um, I, I do see a lot of um, portraits of fabric portraits online and some I love. There's some done by some Asian women that are so beautiful uh, and others I see that people do. I just don't like them. I think with one of my underlying motivations is to kind of show um, great respect and honor for many of the individuals whose portrait I'm doing. They're people that, you know, kind of touch me in, in my life. Um, but also you can tell when you do a piece of work and you, you talk about it, you have done so much research into your subject. You've either seen the Morris exhibition, been so touched by that, or you've done the research on the Artemisia, Artemides, and you just think, my well, goodness, your passion for that is it definitely shows in your work because you know mm -hmm. every single line on each face. It's incredible. Well, um, <laughs> what I find is there's a lot more to know. And a lot of these um, lives are shrouded in mystery. Uh, they really are. Um, we can't ask these people questions, you know, if they're long gone. And um, one of my great interests is Thomas Aikens, uh, American, once again, painter, sculptor, photographer from Philadelphia. He died in 1916. And, um, you know, a lot of times they destroy a lot of um, personal effects mm -hmm. of many of these artists. And there's always, you know, hints of scandal. And, um, you know, uh, we're always wondering. And then I think we always um, put ourselves in their shoes. What would I do if I were Aikens? You know, would I stick to what I believe or would I crumble, um, you know, when people start giving me funny looks. So um, would you like to see my last um, quilt pieces that I've finished? You need me to say yes, because, oh my God, yes. <laughs> okay. Um, this is after doing several portraits, I really wanted to just work with a pattern and color. So I did this um, larger piece of um, a pineapple block. And um, the pineapple block is a very much a favorite of mine. Um, you can make them several different ways. It's basically a log cabin block um, but also the log given on the diagonal. And they look a lot more difficult to do than they really are. Um, I don't really use a pattern or anything like that with these now. I just start sewing them. 
and uh, use the seam allowance to make sure everything, you know, guarantee it's all the same shape. And um, in it, I've um, usually, um, I design them on the floor. I make the blocks and then put them on the floor and then rearrange them in different ways. And then usually find I need more of a certain type uh, to you know, complete the image. And one thing I've learned lately is to go from the horizontal and vertical to the diamond shape. Okay, um, whatever you're designing, I think we do that horizontal and vertical just because, you know, height and width, boring um, static shape uh, compared to the diamond. Uh, and then the diamond can be squared off if you really want the shape of a diamond. And um, what, what I'm saying that is, I made a quilt block or um, quilt top of a portrait of the American, but spent a lot of time in England. Artist John uh, Singer Sargent. Uh, he was born. He was American. His parents were American. But they were abroad when he was born, and he traveled a lot. So he's back and forth. Once again, a life shrouded in mystery. We don't know that much about it. Uh, and I've seen loads of his work. Um, in this one, um, but I made this quilt top in a diamond shape. Okay. It's not rectangular, it's rectangular, but the orientation of the face is so that um, the quilt must be you know, put in the diamond shape to get it right. Um, and of course, it's got lots of diamonds around the border. This is one thing I've learned also. Um, spend some more time working on your borders. Make the borders really count. I think when we finished the, you know, the portrait or the central, central portion of our quilt, when we're done with that, we're kind of bored with it. You know, we are finished. We wish it would just go away or maybe somebody else would just finish it all. But that's a great opportunity to um, spend some more time and effort and add some aesthetic value to it. And it makes a great deal of difference. It really does. The other thing I wanted to mention is that there's probably a new technique, for me anyway, that had to be invented for almost all of these quilts. Okay, I mean, I don't know if that's going to make sense for pe to people, but I have to almost always come up with some method to do it so that it will work. Um, I remember coming up with a new way of doing the border um, for the John Singer Sargent piece because they were a slightly different size. Now I had to make them look like they just fell in there. But what happened was one row, I wanted one half the thickness of the regular blocks. So I had to make them kind of, once again, backwards and upside down, so that when they're put together, they just land there. Um, and sometimes you have to start sewing the pieces together and see where they hit, and then sew them together, because you really might not know where they're going to land. Um, and how people can make quilts, um, you know, in sort of like a factory method is beyond me. I mean, uh, we have our um, men's quilt retreat twice a year. 
And some of the guys that come, they'll have like 500 red squares and 600 yellow ones and, you know, like a thousand black ones. They have to sew them all together. I, I just can't work that way. Um, it's got to be um, more engaging, you know, um, keep me entertained, keep me surprised. Um, the um, art history precedent is Jasper Johns, the great pop artist. Um, take an object, do something to it, do something else to it. That's what we're doing. Not, you know, cut out 1,000 pieces and then not sew them together. Um, you know, I, I just, um, it's got to be fun. It's got to be, you know, uh, art. Um, that's the, our, always our inspiration. Make art, not make a quilt. But you've married the two together so beautifully. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I don't know. Um, <laughs> what do you want at the minute? Okay, I'll show you. Um, it's, um, I watched a film the other night on the Bauhaus. Oh, no, it was, I watched a film on the Bauhaus. I also watched a film on the German painter, Gerhard Richter. Yes. It's, it's something like Never Look Away. It's a fictionalized um, film about his, his life. Um, and they call him by a different name, but it's Gerhard Richter. And in it, um, he goes to Dusseldorf and studies under Joseph Boys, the famous modern artist. Um, years and years ago, when I was in college, I first saw work by Boys, and it was, you know, the felt suit, a suit made out of gray felt, um, lard stuck in the corner of the museum uh, walls. Um, anyway, he was this, he's this very revered figure in modern art. He died, I think, um, about 1972 or so. He had cancer and died, but he's, you know, the, um, really up on, a, um, up on a pedestal. So I thought, you know what, I'm gonna do boys. And I used um, the pattern Storm at Sea. This is it so far. Oh, Jack, that is stunning. Well, I, you know, I can't tell if it's stunning or a disaster. I, I mean, this is what I go through. Um, you're saying, oh, how great it is and all that. And I'm thinking like, oh, that's terrible. You know, I mean, I go through that with every single piece I do. Is this going to be the failure? You know, um, anyway, um, for the viewers, um, this is um, drawings of Storm at Sea, which is um, a linear pattern. It's, it's triangles and uh, one square and then triangles and a trapezoid, I think it is. But they look like they're curves when you put them together. So um, this is the foam core. Um, once again, like I said, I have to make a new, I don't know, um, formula. I made two different photocopies of boys and then spent an entire evening um, trying to put the storm at sea on the face somehow. And it's a pretty difficult pattern um, to work with because it's not really symmetrical. Uh, I, it looks symmetrical, but it's not. Um, so I put the center piece on his nose. Okay, so that's the center piece. This is like the borders, and these are the larger squares. So what I'm doing is um, for the um, every other square, one's light and one's dark, light dark, light dark, and I'm trying to put the image, you know, on it. So what I did was um, I drew the um, uh, Storm at Sea pattern on his face, and then I cut it. Um, I cut it into, um, you know, the shapes. Okay, 
so that I wouldn't have all this confusion. Um, sometimes I make a window, you know, for a square very easy, a triangle very easy. But sometimes um, I have to make a whole set of these windows to put over, um, you know, just showing the area I'm working with. And this one, I thought I would get it all mixed up because there's so many very similar ones, the triangles, but they're going in different directions. It would be a recipe for disaster. Um, I, I'm sure I would end up with something wrong. So um, I just cut them, you, you know, feel, um, I found, you know, the place and just cut it. And then I glued them, I pasted them, taped them back together so that I'm sure I've got them in the right area. I don't know. So I'm working on, um, you know, this one up here, which is right here. Um, this is, you know, the eye, which um, is up there. So before you called, I drew it in. Okay. And then this is a really complicated one. So what I did was... You know um, what I love? I'm sorry. I can hear all the viewers going, that's the complicated one, because I'm <laughs> looking at that and I'm thinking, I cannot believe. And the thing is, because your artistry is so good, when I look at that eye, that to me looks as though it's been hand-drawn for days. And all it is, is fabric, which you have carefully cut out. It's extraordinary. Yeah, extraordinary. I guess. but. And what I love did the fact that as a true artist, you hate it. You you don't see well, it. No, I know. I, I actually love it. I actually love Good. it. Good. Um, and uh, I'm very open to whatever it will be. You know, um, I it, I want it to be what it's going to be. Okay, this block here, I thought I could either spend all day doing it or I could invent a new technique. What I did was I got a piece of wax paper and put it over that and then drew the shape. Okay, cut out the wax paper, put the wax paper on top of a piece of cloth and just cut it. Oh, okay. It took like a minute, you know? And um, so um, this is what I'm always saying, like you gotta come up with some solution, you know, to do this and um, think outside the box, you know? Not, oh, look it up in the quilt book or call all your friends and say, how am I going to do this? I don't know. It's who owns the problem? You own the problem and come up with some creative solution. So um, I believe I have to take this um, further in each direction. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we've got to have this very certain hat on him. Mm -hmm. That was his kind of like trademark image. Um, you know, Joseph Boyce always had that very certain style he had on it. So it definitely needs, um, you know, it could be anybody if we don't have that. So um, that's what I'm working on. Jack, and, incredible. Uh, have you started doing, considering doing any of these classes on Zoom yet? Well, um, I find that the real teaching I have to share is not that very basic thing, but it's more, wait a minute, don't pick that, pick this, you know. Uh, and you are, being, I've done your class, so I can see myself, I know exactly what you mean having done it, because it isn't, it's so difficult, especially with the colors that you choose. Because I even remember picking out two or three pieces and you're like, that works fine, but try that. And it's just that picking up that random piece that you would never have thought of, makes yeah. your technique work so brilliantly. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think my teaching has to be in person uh, because I'm always responding to it's not a one size fit all type of class. It's um, let's be artists, you know, uh, let's make art. Um, so um, that's pretty much what I, and, and this one, um, I, it's very loose also. I'm just like gluing pieces of fabric on, you know, kind of cutting them roughly. And, you know, whereas some of these other pieces, earlier ones, you know, blocks are a lot smaller or um, I'm really looking for like a subtle gradation. In this one, I'm really trying to um, do it 
with the spirit of Joseph Boyce, um, kind of looking over my shoulder. So, um, well, you are slowly um, bringing him back to life in your work. Well, <laughs> he's um, very famous now. Um, you know, he was famous when he was alive, but um, it's um, very radical. If you get to see that film, Never Look Back. Uh, it, it's it's really good. The acting's really good. Um, I didn't know the whole story, you know, so um, it was pretty great. Well, I can assure you it's on my Netflix list. Jack, yeah. I cannot thank you enough for your time. Honestly, I adore every conversation with you. You're amazing. And I've loaded mm -hmm. up as many of the pictures as you've been able to get on your website on as well. And just thank you so much. I cannot wait. Can we have you back on in a few months and see where you are? Oh, sure. Yeah, I'm happy to. I mean, there's all different um, styles of art that I could show, you know, and um, uh, do a show of all the um, porch quilts. You know, that would be, I mean, people should do this. They've got picture windows or, you know, some sort of uh, place to display things. Um, nobody runs away with them. <laughs> <laughs> it's very safe so oh it's brilliant but jack thank you so much stay safe and hopefully you get to travel again soon hope so hope so you too go well thanks jen